Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome everyone that is worshiping with us, both here in the sanctuary and those of us that are joining online. Welcome to our worship this morning, where we get together, praise God, and learn whatever we can to go out and reach more people in His name. A uh, number of announcements that are going on this week are pretty much normal chain of events. Uh, please refer to your insert to your bulletin. I don't have any others that anybody came up to me with, but uh, please uh, look through that and mark your calendar appropriately. I uh, do have a number of joys and concerns that have been raised this morning. Um, Rich Lasher uh, raised a concern about a family on Thomas Street that had a fire and lost everything. Um, I'm pretty sure that the Red Cross may be dealing with that. So if you have goods that you can donate to the Red Cross for um, emergencies like this, that would be great. Uh, also keeping them in our prayers as well. Um, just from my own perspective, the conflict in the Middle East has expanded even more uh, the past couple of days. So please keep those people in that region of the world in your prayers that uh, some people will come to sense, their own senses. Um, Kimmy would like prayers for her sister-in-law who's in the hospital and for her daughters and for herself as well for various health reasons. Uh, Barb Seaton like prayers for her aunt Robin who uh, has had an elevation in her diagnosis and approach. So please, prayers for her Aunt Robin. Um, prayers for the Joe Alexander family uh, who passed away this week, an NBCC uh, professor, uh, friends of people here in the congregation. Um, Teresa would like prayer, continue prayers for Rich for his ongoing uh, challenges with the cancer treatment that he's going through. Uh, Tess would like continue prayers for her nephew Carter who's in the hospital and potentially facing pacemaker uh, implantation. So please prayers for them. Uh, continued prayers for Kim Marshall and her daughter. Um, Dean passed on that Kim was in the hospital for a brief uh, stint yesterday. So please prayers for all of them. I would guess that it's extremely taxing on all of them for what they're going through. And I heard that Ed Coluccio fell uh, and hurt his wrist. So prayers for Ed in uh, his wrist, wrist recovery as well as his own uh, stability. And I believe that's all that I have this morning for joys and concerns. So let's continue with this morning's prelude. <laughs>
If you're able, would you please rise and join with me in this morning's call to worship? Lord, you answer us when we pray. You are our deliverer. You free us from the enemy. Our fortress in whom we trust. By opening him this morning is number 304. Easter people, raise your voices. Let us now join together in this morning's unison prayer. Let us pray. Lord Almighty, protect us from the enemy. Empower and equip us for this battle. Through the power of Christ, lead us in your strength. We pray for one another that we would stand together in victory. God, break through and open doors to new hopes and possibilities for our church and in our own lives. We surrender our wills to you and faithfully follow into the new and unknown future. May your will be done. Amen. Let's continue with that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. Lord be with you. It's good to be here with all of you in the house of the Lord. Um, before we get into our God moments, I just wanted to um, make a little announcement. I thought of it like too late. Um, so if you, worship starts at 11, but if something happens and you run in a little late and you come after 11.10, um, which happens, um, we just ask that you use the George Street doors because what we're going to, what we're doing is we're, we're, um, at 11.10, we're locking those doors so that we just have one set of doors to just be watching. We just 
you know, just for safety reasons. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, so just, if you come after 11, 10, because something happens, just go that way. Doors are open, just that one, okay? All right, so, <laughs> so love to hear from you today. How is God moving in your life? How have you experienced God, felt God, been led by God, noticed God, been nudged by God? What's God been doing? Yeah, Dean. So I was watching this show, um, I Survived Beyond and Back. And it tells of people who have died and then came back to life. Mm. And so, so many of them still want God or the peace of heaven or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they do not fear death. Right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's a promise for all of us, right? Anyone else want to share? What's God been doing? Yeah, over here. This way. Like many of you, I was robbed by the eclipse on Monday, but for me, it was like an Easter moment. Oh. The darkness blocked out the sun. You could spell that S-U-N or S-O-N, but it wasn't enough to keep the sun away from us. Soon after, the sun began to shine again, which is what happened on Easter. Yeah. So to me, it was a really good time. Yeah. So what did God say to you through that? God's amazing love. There's nothing can keep God's amazing love. Yes. Amen. Amen. Anyone else want to share? What's God been doing? Well, I have one. Last, last um, Sunday, I had the opportunity to pray with someone. And, um, you know... We, we know we trust that God moves um, in, the, in the people we're praying for, right? Amen? Um, but I also want to add that God also moves in us when we're praying. And as I was praying for this person, we both, it just it was like a push of the Holy Spirit. Just the power and presence of God just came in such a way. And since those prayers, um, this person has been testifying about all the different ways that God is is moving in their lives and so I'm just I'm just grateful to be able to partner and move in that and just to experience God's presence in that way. Anyone else want to share? We take this time to recognize God's goodness to say basically thank you God right so it's a, it's a time of offertory when we offer of ourselves we offer back to God a portion of what God has already given to us. Everything already belongs to God. So we give back a portion with a grateful heart, celebrating all that God has done for us. So I say thank you for your giving, and I, I ask that as we listen to this music, that we give thanks to God.
Oh God, we exalt your holy name. We praise you for salvation through Jesus Christ. And we give back to you a reflection of our gratitude and love. We pray that you will receive these gifts, bless them, increase them, that they would have a, a greater impact in our world, that more and more people will come to know you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. And are there any kids that want to come up? Any kids? Today's your birthday? Oh, how are you doing that? Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Nine years old. Happy birthday to you. Do you have something special today? Um, I do play on, on like, not like today, mm -hmm. but I do play on like, like the art thing kind? Yeah. Yeah. We can't do it today because some of the friends I want to bring or something. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll arrange it another time. You know, I'm getting old, and I thought that the first most exciting thing you could do today was take a nap. <laughs> the first thing that came to my mind. So, so how are you doing today? Thank you. You doing well? Yeah. So, how many have you ever prayed for someone who passed away? Yeah. 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 When my grandma was in the hospital, I prayed for her. Yeah. You prayed for that. Have you ever prayed for anyone else? It's on. Check. 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 What is the purpose of praying, do you think? It's like a purpose where you're like com communicating with God. Right. Just for something. Right. Well, and for not only something, for someone. Yeah. Okay. So, so. It could be yourself. Right. It could be a family member, a friend. So it could, so it's a pretty important thing to do then, right? So if it's an important thing to do, then we need to know how to do it. What if, so let's just say. If someone was like really sad, something happened in their life and they were really sad, how could we pray for them? We could pray like, I hope for them to like something happy to right. happen. Right. So you can just so so let's like just say give them joy. Right. So just the opposite. So you can say you can you can tell that to, to God and say you know thank you so much for this relationship. You know it's great. You know you must be really thankful about God that this happened. And God, I ask. For, for this person, that you take away whatever it is for them, right? Take away what they don't like and give them what they do. Right. So, Lord, we pray that you would um, take away their sadness or heal their sadness or uh, mend, mend their, their yeah, that's a good word, mend, mend their things, yeah, any kind of words like that. And then you can pray the opposite. So we take away the bad stuff and we pray the good stuff. So we can pray that they get, like, something nice, like... Right. What a gift from their friend. What are you doing? Your feet would pray that. Yes. What's the opposite of sadness? Happy. Happiness. You can so you can pray that they they in, you know they take away their sadness. They, they get a surprise. Or that that God would fill them with joy. That something that God would step into whatever is going on and give them peace. That they would they would know God's presence. All kinds of things we could pray, right? Right. And so so, so as we were praying, we expect God. Does God hear us? Totally, absolutely, God hears us every single time, and so we know that God is with us, and God hears us, and God loves us, and so we want to make sure that we're living, that we are lifting up one another, right? So, so, could do you think we could pray for somebody else, at least one or one person this week? Yeah, would you be willing to do that? All right, I want to hear about it next week. All right, and so, so let's pray. Well, what are you thankful for? I am thankful that we all have a chance at life. Okay. We have life. God gives us life. Do you want to share? Let's pray on this. Um, in God, in a grateful heart, so let's pray. Dear God, you gave us. Thank you for life. Thank you for life. Thank you for family. Thank you for family. Thank you for friends. Thank you for friends. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. In his name we pray. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Any kids coming up?
This morning's scripture, scripture lesson comes from Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. By now you should recognize much of this. Um, the armor of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you've done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. <clears throat> and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's peoples. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Jeff. So what does it mean that we, as believers in Jesus Christ, are the body of Christ? I mean, it means many different things from us being in relationship with God and with others, a community, a faith family, with relationships that are supportive and encouraging, while also holding one another accountable, you know, spurring one another on to live into who God created us to be working with one another toward the common mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world, to partner with one another in ministry, to worship together, care together, learn together, grow together. The body of Christ, that we together are God's change agents in the world who carry the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. And through Jesus, we have identity and authority and power and so much more. So we've been in a series about spiritual warfare, recognizing that there are spiritual forces of darkness in this world that seek to steal, kill, and destroy, to break us down, cause incredible harm, and especially lead us away from God, away from our faith, away from goodness and joy and and into a life that is dark and distant and demolished. So we need to stand firm, put on the full armor of God to actively fight the enemy, the adversary, to defend ourselves, protect ourselves, and continue to stand firm. So we've examined all the different pieces of the spiritual armor, and in this passage, I want us now to focus on verse 18. It says, And pray in the Spirit, on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. And with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So you may have noticed, I talk about prayer a lot. Anybody else notice this? <laughs> I do. I talk about prayer a lot. I mean, truly, it's because I believe that it is the most important thing a church does. When Jesus was turning the tables at the temple in an act of justice, he said, my house will be called a house of prayer. Right. Prayer is how we connect with God. It's one of the ways we hear God and grow closer to God and especially discern God's will. And for believers... Prayer is essential. Paul writes in 1 Bethel, Thessalonians 5 that we are to pray without ceasing, being in continual conversation with God, prayers of gratitude, inviting God into every part of our lives. To pray in this way all the time would be chronos time, the steadyish, ongoing, normalish kind of everyday prayers the kind of prayers we do on a general basis. Prayers for chronos time. It's where we get the word chronological. But in verse 18, Paul is referencing a different kind of praying for different time. 
He says to pray in the Spirit on all occasions. And the word occasions in the Greek is kairos, which surprised me because all occasions, I was kind of thinking it would be like just us unceasingly all the time. But kairos is heightened. I mean, it could be a good thing. Kairos is a God moment when God is moving in someone's life like mountaintop experiences. And I really hope that everyone has experienced those wonderful, beautiful kairos moments with God, God moments that fill us. The kairos time could also be heightened in other ways. Kairos comes from the Greek para, which means head. Think of it as time coming to a head. Uh, kairos as strategic time and opportune time, like a window of opportunity would be kairos time. Or, or when someone's in danger, or when someone may be faltering on the edge of falling. Kairos time. I also think that although we may have experienced kairos in the wonderful God moment, we probably have also experienced the other type of kairos when our world goes from this to this or this, you know, straight up with anxiety or straight down with depression, feeling peril either way. I mean, maybe there's something we've overcome and are, are being tempted by it again and we're not succumbing to it or or something happens where we're suddenly filled with fear or doubt or loneliness or sadness or, or even letting our guard down in pride. I mean, think about the times when you have gone from this steady life and everything's just going along to this, crazy. It just feels like your whole world's been knocked off the edge. I can't be the only, anybody else ever experienced that? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, you need to experience Realize, though, that those were the times when we were vulnerable, very vulnerable. And when we experience anything like it again, we need to recognize that that is when we are most vulnerable, that what, that is when we are, are at our weakest and a perfect target for the enemy to create a perfect storm of attack. So in this passage, because Kairos is in the context of spiritual warfare, Paul is saying that we are to pray in those kairos times, those times of spiritual danger, those heightened times of turmoil, those times as if, as if there's a spiritual code read. And to put it into the context of Paul urging us to put on the full armor of God, letting us know that attacks will happen. They will come and we need to be ready and alert, praying when the enemy strikes. Kairos moment of all hands on deck, or maybe in reference to prayer, it could be all hands lifted high. Petitioning God for protection. Prayer that is targeted at the enemy, commanding the enemy to go in Jesus' name. Prayer requesting that God send his warring angels and his ministering angels into the circumstance. Prayer requesting the supernatural power and strength of God Almighty to intervene. We pray this for ourselves and for others, especially for others. It's called intercessory prayer. Because often when the attacks start to come or we find ourselves plunged into darkness, we need the extra prayers from the Lord's people to stand in the gap, interceding on behalf of another. Intercessory prayer. Intercession simply means on behalf of someone to stand in that gap for someone. And there are examples of this all the way through the Bible, of people standing in the gap and interceding for others, Abraham, Moses, all the way through. But the one that really stood out to me the most happened on Maundy Thursday, during Holy Week, on the night in which Jesus was betrayed. Jesus and his disciples were in the upper room. And we, we look at that night, we tend to focus on Jesus's servant leadership as he washed the disciples' feet, or maybe on his use of the Passover feast to usher in the sacrament, that his body would be given for us, that the bread would be his body given for us, the cup would be his blood poured out for us. Or maybe we focus on Judas and his betrayal for 30 pieces of silver. 
or Jesus teaching at length about the love of God and our call to love one another as Jesus loves us. We may even focus on the Garden of Gethsemane and Jesus praying with such anguish that his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. There is one section we don't talk about as much. In Luke 22, verses 31 through 32, they're in the upper room, and right before those two verses, Jesus is telling the disciples that he is appointing them to his kingdom. And then when you read it, it, it seems as if he switches course. It, it seems very abrupt. But it really isn't because it makes sense because Jesus knows what's going on. Jesus says, Simon, Simon, referring to Peter, using his old name from his old life, indicating he knows Peter is going to experience something that is going to set him going back to his old self and his old ways. And then he says to all the disciples, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. A warning that they all are headed for a spiritual attack. They would be a target of the enemy who would sift them like wheat, shaking them down fiercely, trying to force them all to fall. And they were at this high in their minds. Everything was going well. They were feeling spiritually elevated. Being a part of Jesus' kingdom, Woo! wow, that's great. In our life groups, we're looking at the book The Invisible War by Chip Ingram, and he describes how these spiritual attacks will often happen when we are growing close to God, spiritual growth. When we're, um, when we're invading enemy territory, like Jesus going to the cross was definitely doing that. When we're exposing the enemy, when we're breaking with the world, or when we're on the brink of a breakthrough and blessing, the resurrection is coming. Jesus knew a spiritual attack was coming, but the disciples didn't know any of them. To, to them, everything was all fine. Even it was good. But Jesus was alert. He knew they were headed toward a spiritual attack. They were, they were going here, and then they're here. Wow, it's wonderful, Jesus' kingdom. And then with Jesus' arrest, they're plunged down here. A spiritual attack was imminent especially Peter, who was to be the leader. And Jesus responded with prayer. He said to Peter, I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith will not fall, that it may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Peter, in his pride and his arrogance, didn't think it was possible for him to falter in his faith. He knew he would never doubt, never turn away. Enemy struck. Fear took hold. And Peter denied Jesus three times, even before the rooster crowed that day. Jesus prayed, interceded, stood in the gap for when the faith of his followers was going to falter. And Jesus interceded in prayer on their behalf. And I believe that the power of that prayer is what enabled Peter to eventually do what Jesus said. Turn back, get back on track, and strengthen his brothers. And Jesus knew it was coming. He was alerted to it. And Paul tells us to also be alert. It was Peter who urged in 1 Peter 5 to be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith. And he could urge this because he knew it. He had experienced this himself. So what does it mean to be alert? What does it look like practically? Well, the first part of being alert is to know, to know the schemes and the devices of the devil. Know the playbook of the enemy. Recognize when maneuvers are happening, when people are in vulnerable positions. Understand and notice the tactics. Dutch Sheep wrote in his book, Intercessory Prayer, that to the degree that we are ignorant of the way our adversary thinks and operates, of his plans, plots, schemes, and devices, to that degree, he will gain on us, prey on us, defraud us of what is ours, and have 
hold the greater position. Scripture warns us in several places to be alert. And not only need, do we need to be informed of the general ways the enemy strikes, we can also continue and increase in our understanding because we need to. But being alert is more than just knowing the information. And it's even more than paying attention to the signs in people and in circumstances. And the enemy doesn't usually play, play his hand so openly. There's stealth moves, concealed, disguised, and there's, as if there's camouflage. And although the devil may be there, ready to pounce, we don't always see it coming. So I believe that being told to be alert means all of that and that God will also alert us. We just need to be listening. That chronos everyday praying, that is building our ability to hear God and see God and know God so that when God alerts us, bringing to mind in a strong and sudden or special way a person or a situation, often with a, a strong heaviness, a, a feeling that just something's just not right. Be alert to God's alert. And then step into action. Go on the offensive for what God just alerted us to and pray. All kinds of prayers and requests for whatever and especially whoever, whomever is in need of prayer. Pray for their protection, for them to have God's discernment and wisdom, for their eyes to be open to what the enemy is doing, for their heart to stay with God, for them to stay strong, stand firm. If it's what God revealed, pray for God's leading and holy conviction in their lives. Pray compassion and mercy and grace. Pray for others in the spirit at every Kairos time. And that doesn't mean that we stop praying for them in the Kronos time, but at Kairos, it's supercharged, it's targeted, it's intense. Pray in the Spirit, meaning that we pray what God leads us to pray. We respond in our prayers to what God has put on our hearts and in our minds. We are filled with the Spirit and led by the Spirit, and we continue to pray until we receive peace about it or until God releases us from it. How many have ever experienced being part of something where you got through it. It was a turmoil time, one of those Kairos times, and you find out later that people had been praying you through. Anybody else? Yeah, it's powerful. That is a huge part of what it means to be the body of Christ. That we actively participate in spiritual warfare through prayer in those Kairos moments when we feel compelled by God to pray. And we also pray for one another, interceding for one another in all of the chronos times as well, lifting up one another in prayer, looking out and then looking up for our faith family, the wider body of Christ, and for the world that needs to come to know Christ, to know salvation and victory over darkness. We pray as intercessors, as Jesus intercedes for us. He interceded for Peter and the rest of the disciples. And our risen Lord is now sitting at the right hand of God. And Jesus is our advocate. And he intercedes for us. So we can live in his name and pray in the power of his name. Just imagine what we could do together. As the body of Christ, praying for one another, praying for others, praying for a broken world, looking out, looking up on our knees in prayer with our hands lifted high, knowing that every battle we face, Jesus will move that mountain. He will walk beside us in the shadows so there's no need to fear. He will cover us and protect us with his unending and abundant love. The work of the cross is finished and Jesus is our victory. Amen? So the battle belongs to God. Belongs to Jesus Christ. And so I invite you all to stand if you're able as we sing that. That the battle belongs to you, Jesus.
that no matter what we're facing, no matter what we're going through, that battle, we're giving it to you in prayer through the power of God. One of the most important things we can do as believers in Jesus Christ is to pray, and especially pray together. Let us pray. Oh God Almighty, we come before you praising your holy name. You are good. You are filled with grace, and you continue to pour out your love and grace into our lives. We long to follow you in every way. And we ask that you step into all of our circumstances, all the things in our lives that are troubled and hurting, the things that are causing us to fear and doubt. Lord, we pray that you would come and bring your presence, that you would shift the atmosphere, change the circumstances, and that your power would abound. 
Lord, we pray that you would lift up heavy hearts. That you would bring your hope into places where people feel hopeless. We pray that you would move in ways that help people to know that you are there with them. And give them your courage and your strength. Lift us up, Lord, and help us to stand firm, to, to stand strong in every moment. Lord, we pray for you to come and fill us to overflowing. That if there's any darkness in us, that you would bind it up and cast it out in Jesus' name. We seek to be yours and yours alone. We pray for healing in every area of our lives. We pray that if there, there are areas, relationships, Lord, that are struggling and hurting, that, we, that you would bring your grace, that there would be a mending between people. We pray for a world, Lord, that seems overcome with hatred and violence. We pray that you would intercede, that you would step into all of the war-torn areas, that you would put protection around all of the innocent people, Lord, that are being harmed by all of the hatred and the decisions of leaders. Lord, we pray that you would touch the hearts and minds of the leaders and you would shift them. We pray for people, Lord, that they would find peace. Bring peace, Lord. We pray for all those areas in the world that are hurting and struggling with not only violence, Lord, but are struggling for food and resources. We pray for you to come. Lord, we know that the only way this world changes is through you. We pray that you would come and move and that you would lead us to be part of where you're moving that we would be change agents in the world, that we would be people of your peace, of your hope and your love, that we would stand firm and be strong and courageous. Lord, we pray for healing in all of the things we're dealing with around the world, in our community, in our schools, in our own lives, and in our church. Lord, we pray for you to move vitally. We pray for healing in areas that are experiencing brokenness. We pray for people who are experiencing problems in their lives. Lord, we pray for Ed as he is struggling with pain and damage in his wrist. Lord, that you would bring healing to his wrist and you would lift him up and give him your strength. We pray for Tina, Lord, that you would bind up and cast out the cancer, that you would restore her vision, take away the swelling, that you would move mightily in her body, Lord, and restore her to health and well-being. And be with Kim, Lord, as she walks beside Tina, that you would give her your hope, reveal to both of them your hope. Lord, we pray that whatever Kim is going through in her body, Lord, that you would also be there to move mightily in her body, that her body would be pain-free and have full mobility. Strengthen them, Lord. We pray for Robin, that you would bring healing in Jesus' mighty name, that cancer would be bound up and cast out now, that you would Make your presence known in such a way that you would be glorified by the miraculous healing in her. Wrap her in your loving arms and lift her up, Lord, and help her to see you in the midst. And be with all of those who love her, Lord, that you would show them your compassion and grace. Lord, we lift up rich for healing, complete healing. Cancer gone now in Jesus' name that you would bring complete healing and bring into his life people who would also be healers and speak hope and truth. We pray for the family that experienced the loss of the fire, Lord, that you would protect them from the enemy that would cause them to fear. 
keep them from fear, keep them from scarcity, bring people into their lives that will help them and, and carry them and cover them and lift them up and provide for them through you, Lord. We know you are our provider, and we pray that you would bring provision in every area of our lives. We pray for your provision for this family. We pray for your provision in our workplaces. We pray for your provision in our families. And we pray for your provision for our church. That your abundance would come. And that we would always honor you with whatever you give us, Lord. We pray for changed hearts changed minds, that people would move in your spirit and seek to honor and glorify you more and more, that we would all glorify you in our walk, that we would be people who, who show you to the world by what we say, by what we do. Oh God, we know that we've not always done this, so hear our prayer of confession as the people of God repeat after me. Lord, I have sinned. I've not always followed you. I've not always been loving. Forgive me. Set me on your path. Lead me in your way. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. And this proves God's love for you and for me. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. So I'd like to invite you all to stand if you're able as we sing together, He Lives.
Jesus lives. Amen. And so go forth knowing that Jesus lives and that resurrection power is in you and may it go through you to continue to lift up others that they too may know his resurrection power. Amen.